I wrote this really long piece about how DevRel was basically dead today and, and the way that people were doing it were wrong and, and the old traditional ways of DevRel doesn't work, which if you haven't been around long enough, maybe you've never spent a, a lot of time with DevRel. The old way of DevRel was like code tutorials of how to get started with a product. And that was basically it, but it was just different layers of the same thing. Really simple, really shrunk down to basically nothing. So the value that a user gets out of it is only at the scale of, if I've never seen your product before, this is how I'm going to get value from it. Or I've never interacted with this product before, this is how I get value. And when I went to Clerk, I was basically DevRel. And my attitude was, nobody cares about getting started. They can just go to the docs, read the quick start guide. It's the same value. So let's just do content that makes sense. So the first thing that we did was we did a lot of large form tutorials that actually solved an issue today. Whether that was like, how do I introduce RLS plus Clark to make like authenticated with Superbase? Like things like that, that really make sense. And people actually need that to solve a problem, whether they're building an app, a side project or a SaaS, like you need that piece to connect everything together. Um, and so we started there and then that kind of grew into, well, I can only do so much. I'm one, I'm one guy, I can only put out X pieces of content a week, a month, a year, and I can only talk to 200 podcasts and then people are going to get bored of me, right? If they hear my voice all the time, you're not going to listen. So I went with this strategy of finding people who I believed once they tried the product, they would be a super fan, essentially. Mm -hmm. They would love the product so much that I wouldn't even have to approach them to say, hey, if I want this piece of content and you're a popular blogger, YouTuber, TikTok, Twitch, whatever, if I approach you and said, could I sponsor you? The odds of you are answering with a yes is very likely. And then I know whatever you put out is going to be genuine enough to make sense. Um, so I scoured the internet looking for people, uh, friends of mine, people that like I'd interacted with over the, like, the last few years. And I came up with this list and I put it in an ocean dock and said, okay, these are the people I want to try club one time. Mm -hmm. And once they try it one time, if they hate it, that's fine. Just remove them from the list. If they love it and it suddenly solves some sort of issue for them, then we can talk about how can we sponsor this person. Um, and so for Clerk, it was Theo. So if people know Theo, Theo is very popular in the space now. Um, and, and even back then, I think he only had... So now he has 200k subs. I think back then it was at 50k or something like that. It was a lot less than he has today, but he had an audience that loved what he was doing. Um, and I badgered Theo for months and months about just random things. Like we, we were interacting with each other. We were, you know, doing all that kind of stuff. And then I had realized talking through him, he has create T3 app, which is a popular open source project. And they had a create T3 turbo app, which is also a popular open source project, which is essentially T3 on both Expo and Next.js. And the problem they had was they could always authenticate the Next.js app, but there was no way for them to produce some sort of good authentication for the Expo app and have them interact so you could use one TRPC. So I said, okay, I can build that for you with Clerk and it will just work. So I built this repo out. It's still there at Clerk. I, I'm sure they're still maintaining it, but there's, there's, a, there's a project there. And I said, okay, here's the solution for you. Let's make a video. And so he tried Clerk a couple of times and he was like, okay, yeah, yeah, let's do the sponsorship. So we did the sponsorship and uh, the first video ever he did, he didn't even show any code. All the, it was a three minute video and we intentionally show, showed no code at all. We just showed the app working from end to end and showed how it worked. And then like put a link to the GitHub and mm -hmm. said like, this is how you can do it. And then the week afterwards, I did a video on my own channel that described like how the actual pieces fit together. So now we've made two pieces of content and I've paid Theo once. And then Theo was like, oh, cool, awesome, a video. Let me tweet about it. Let me post it on my own YouTube as a community post. And then that evolved into, okay, well, I'll make a blog post now so that can be found on the internet. And so now we have like three or four or five different pieces of media. And then that's how the relationship built. 
and then we went further and further and theo and i are now friends uh theo actually invested in in unki um and like that's kind of how you have to start your trend with a new startup and it takes time uh in the open source world it's a bit easier probably because people that contribute you can probably figure out like how can i make this person who contributes maybe they write a blog post or something like that you can kind of angle it um but it's all about finding those people and once you find those people um you, you can go from there and then things like twitter and stuff like if you have a business account for your twitter account just don't use it uh is essentially my opinion and people get pretty upset about that but uh you're better off making your own personal account and using that personal account to promote your business um if you look at unki like we i don't think we i think we post like retweets and quote teats and that's about it uh we've never really posted anything on there because people trust someone with a face but they don't trust the business i'm not going to follow a business like i'm not going to go and be like amazon aws let me follow the aws account i'm going to be like who's the devrel at aws okay it's this person let me follow them because they're going to have nuggets of information that i care about um aws is probably going to try and promote some new thing that i don't want right i'm just not interested in it um and then as you build your brand up you can then start using your own twitter account or your x account or whatever we want to call it today uh to do things like change logs or um things like that but you got to keep it f fun for someone to interact with so if you look at my twitter and you look at andreas's twitter and you look at our, our unki twitter it's very much a lot of shit posts um <laughs> because one it's social media and it should be fun for everybody. And two, um, people like that stuff. They don't want to come to Twitter and be educated. They want to have fun. And maybe there's some education going on, but it's like very lighthearted. And um, doing those kinds of things, like lets people know that you're a real human. You're not just like some guy, some millionaire with a Ferrari. Like I'm not any of that. I have a car that's like 20 years old and I live in a house that's pretty small. Like I'm not some millionaire. I'm just some regular guy who just happened to build a company. and. Um, I think that gets lost as as people try and build their business up.